Hey, thanks you very much for joining me. This is Bug Powder Dust, and this is the fourth and final episode of the Beginner's Guide to Rimworld. So the colony is going relatively well so far. There's still lots to do, um, but by and large, they are getting to a point where they, they've got power, they've got food, got a bit of storage, they've got a very small infirmary. And again, none of this is optimal. You know, everything's a bit small. Lots of wood. Um, but it's kind of... It's your first step along the way to getting a colony that's uh, kind of self-sustaining. So at this point, when everything is kind of swimming along and it's sort of all right, we need to start thinking about, well, where am I going to expand? What do I need next? Um, so really, you're probably going to get a fourth colonist relatively soon. Either somebody's going to get chased by another faction and will ask you to uh, defend them, uh, or this prisoner is going to get uh, recruited. Now, he hasn't got anywhere to sleep at the moment. I mean, you know, you could sleep here, but uh, it's not ideal. He's going to get interrupted. So we want to try and build a bedroom of his own. So I think at this point, it's probably a good idea to now think about, well, what are we going to do in the future? So you can map out using the orders tab. You can sort of make some rough plans. This doesn't do anything. This just kind of maps things out for you. You know, so you get some some drawings on the map. Um, and if you want to get rid of it, just click on remove plan and just kind of scroll through it. It's actually quite useful. Um, I've only got three people right now, so things are going to take a while. But I'm quite tempted to dig this out anyway, add on something here, maybe another couple of bedrooms, because it will look fairly neat and tidy. Although well, mining is not uh, our strong point here, but I think if we do that, then I think that'll give us a little bit of space. In fact, if I just mine that out, then what we can do is then we can build a little corridor along here, um, which will go down, and then so they have access to sort of the outside of the, of the building, uh, if they need to get move around quickly, or you know, there's there's lots of options. Um, I think what we're going to start to do. Oh wow, that's really slow mining. See, this is the downside of having people who are not great at mining. Um, you've got he's three, she's a four and a two. So you need to kind of play to the strengths of your colonists. Mining is really slow, and I think at this point when we've got um, very slow colonists, it's probably best to actually cancel. I think cancel that. And we'll work something else out. So maybe expand upwards. Um, and we're going to build some bedrooms up here instead. Again, we'll put in a corridor here. So I think let's just speed things up a little bit. So we'll put in a corridor. And we'll put three by three beds in here. So kind of along the top. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This leaves actually a little, little bit more space. So we've gone from this side. One, two, three. We'll get rid of that. Oops, wrong one. And then we'll have one room in the middle that's kind of slightly bigger. Just uh, from a terms of aesthetic point of view, probably looks a bit better. Like that. This will be a bigger room. And then we can put stick a couple of doors there and there, for instance. Um, so there's a corridor. And also you can heat the corridor. And then the rooms will get heat uh, from, from that corridor as well. Okay, let's speed things up a little bit. How's John getting on? So John is currently... He stepped in the heat, minor pains. It's quite hot in here then. 19 degrees. I wouldn't have said so. He hasn't got good apparel. Uh, so what's he got on? 31%. So this is one that's causing a problem. He's got a, a poor t-shirt as well. So basically if it's under 50%, they start to complain about it being... Um, not not fit for purpose, and they'll get a debuff for it. So Contreras is now trying to recruit John, and it's reduced his resistance. So basically, you know, if you try and recruit somebody, it does reduce their resistance anyway. I'm assuming that if you go for the option here, where you try and reduce the resistance, it does it quicker. This is, I mean, this is a new mechanic. I'm not entirely sure about this. Anyway, so we are cooking food, and this is good. We need to get some more, um, some more food in because once we've got through our rice. Um, Probably what we got enough for sort of 11 meals here. Uh, we're going to need some more food. So I think let's start hunting a couple of these mufflows. So let's go to... So you can either go for the hunt option and click on a couple. Must designate huntable animals. Interesting. Or you click on the uh, muffalo itself and click on hunt. So we're going to choose a couple to hunt. There's a few down here as well. So... Muffalo are very good. They give you a lot of leather. Uh, they give you a lot of meat as well. So who's our hunter? And so the hunter is Fringer. There it is. 
Now, muffalo, I should say, do, as I explained, I think, in the last episode, the one before that, all animals do have a chance of attacking um, based on the wildlife tab. You can see they have a 2% of attacking. That's every shot is that is taken. So as it says, you, to minimise the chance of a creature seeking revenge, you attack it from a rifle range with a slow firing weapon. So the more you fire and the nearer you are, the more likely they are to attack you. We may see that. In this instance, we haven't. Okay. So we've got a heat wave coming. Now, heat waves are not great, honestly speaking. Um, there's a couple of ways to, to mitigate a heat wave. One is you've got your, your freezer. Now, this is great. It will start to use more uh, energy, but we're kind of all right for energy right now. Um, just keep an eye on the, uh, the, heat, the heat in here. You might have to turn this up to accommodate. The other thing that you can do is you can build coolers, passive coolers made from wood. Now, they're not brilliant. They don't replace aircon. Uh, but they aren't too bad to cool things down um, for your colonists if they start to complain about heat. So that's something to keep an eye on. Sewing takes forever, unfortunately. But every time he does that, or she, Contreras, she's getting now, you can see the skill levels going up. Which is good. There we go. Oh, he's, and the fringe has actually left, left the, uh, the kill to cook a meal. But that's okay. This does deteriorate relatively quickly, so we need to come back and keep an eye on that. It's actually 45 degrees outside, and it's... Wow. So you'll see here, it's 45 degrees outside, and it's only and it's 15 degrees in our fridge. Now, this was set to minus 7, so you'll see my point. So I need to increase that considerably. I'll set to minus 27. The other thing that you can do um, is you double insulate the walls. So I'm going to chop that tree down and I'm going to start to double insulate it from the outside world. So let's put in a, a wood. Oh. So as soon as the tree's been chopped down, um, I will uh, thicken that wall. You'll notice the chunks of the spacecraft have been impacted nearby. This is worth looking at. These things are like gold. Okay, So you can basically deconstruct these and they give you components. So it's always worth keeping an eye out for these messages. Um, it's, not, yeah, it's actually quite a way away, but they are really worth it. So keep an eye out for these things. Um, and you can click deconstruct, and then when you uh, colonists get a minute, they'll go down and uh, take care of that for you. Because components, believe me, they are super precious, um, especially mid to late games. So you want to remember that and uh, go go and grab them. Right, so the muffler have yielded quite a lot of meat, which is great. There's another one. It's getting butchered straight away. So each muffler gives... Uh, I mean, look at that, 155 meat. So that, that's enough for kind of 15 and a half meals, which is perfect. So we're cracking on with the research uh, around the batteries, which is good. And we are going to need to chop down more trees. So let's, let's get on with that. Chop wood. Now, over the past couple of episodes, we've actually chopped down quite a lot of trees in the, in the vicinity. So having to travel further afield. So now it's summer. Still got the heat wave. 35 outside. See, now it's minus 3 inside, which is good because we've really cranked this up. Power-wise, we're doing okay. How's he doing? He's got 32, so he's not going to be particularly happy. What we're going to do for this chap is we're going to stick in a passive cooler in his bedroom. Uh, how hot is it in here? 31. Yeah. Okay, so this is another thing that's probably worth mentioning. Put a passive cooler in here, and then you've got these things called vents. Now, what a vent does is it can actually leach temperature from the room next to it. So if I rotate it, if I rotate it, why isn't it rotating? There we go. You'll see that if you put it in the wall, it will join these two bedrooms together in terms of temperature and it will normalize between the bedrooms. So if I do that, let me put a cooler in the middle. And of course, this also works for heat as well. Put a, a, a you know a heater in the middle. It will take the heat or the cold from here, push it to the other bedrooms. But we do need lots of wood to do this because they're 50 a piece, so uh, they, they are uh, fairly costly in terms of wood. So this is actually really good. It's showing you how to deal with heat, uh, or how to deal with temperature, actually, which is very important. So this is obviously uh, worth seeing. Right. So the cooler's been built, and you can see it's bringing the temperature in here, if you look down here when I hover over, to 27 degrees, which is more bearable. But more importantly, it's pushing that temperature to the other rooms because they are now connected. So that's going to be a little bit more pleasant for the colonists. So bear in mind vents. They, they can be a lifesaver, especially in the winter. Um, which is actually worth knowing. I mean, in this room it's 34, so it's going to be quite unpleasant. Right, so how much wood do we have? 43. Okay, so we've got enough. So let's start to build some wooden walls on here. We'll try and insulate this from the outside world. 
So it's currently, yeah, see it's 7 degrees in here now. So it's kind of, it's, it is just refrigerated, but it's going up and down. This hasn't made much of a difference, has it? A little bit of a difference, because it's getting heat from outside as well. So you really want to double wall your freezer as much as you can to protect it from uh, from uh, excessive temperatures. It's just an example of what you can do. But it's getting the heat from here, the corridor, uh, and, and all sorts of places. Yeah, so I'm just um, just hovering over here and looking at the the, uh, the temperature down here. I mean, this is 40 degrees in here, so what we need to do is get a cooler in here as well. Just to make it pleasant in here for their purposes. Right, next thing we're going to do, we're going to put in a, um, a tailor bench, an electric tailor bench. I'm going to put it in there. And you'll notice there, as soon as I put it in, it says it will have bad, it will have work speed penalty due to a bad temperature. So if it's too hot or too cold, or you're outside, in fact, your people doing crafting, including research, will suffer as a result. So that's why I put the passive cooler in here to try and bring your temperature. Excuse me, temperature down to a, uh, a decent temperature. The trouble is, I don't think we've got enough wood left, so let's, let's do a little bit more chopping. We have to go up here now to get some, some wood. You'll see how critical it is to have a, a raw resource such as wood in order to, to take care of all of this. Um, so his hasn't been built yet either. So we need to concentrate on getting some, some wood here. So if we can get all of our guys to do that, that'd be very helpful. So let's, let's grab some wood. Right. What we're going to do towards the end of the episode, I don't want to drag this out for too long really because I don't want to turn this into a let's play as I said. I just want to show you the basics and this is a good example of how to do a temperature. I'm going to open up this ancient danger just so you can see what you may get. And of course it does change from ancient danger to ancient danger, so we shall see. Right, I'm going to let these guys build these things. What I'd like to do is actually prioritise the heat, so I'm going to... If you set up a, uh, a job to create something like this, for instance, and you've actually changed your mind, but it's half built, or you don't want to take take off the, the build order, you can click on that. So this doesn't remove the build order. What it does is it just says, actually, don't work on this right now, because I want them to concentrate on the passive cooler here, and the passive cooler here. So we've got trees chopping. All oh, right, okay, this is actually quite handy. So. Contreras experienced inspiration. He will successfully recruit the next prisoner regardless of difficulty or resistance. Okay, that's actually really handy. So let's have a look. Is he assigned to wardening? Yes, he is. Brilliant. Which means that John is going to come over to our side imminently. What this means, of course, is that we need to um, set up a bedroom for him imminently. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mine out this little area here, which will give us enough space. In fact, to do that one as well so they can get past... I'll put him put him in here. There we go. Right, so passive coolers in. You can see the temperature in the bottom right-hand corner is now dropping. So from the 30s into the kind of mid-20s. So that's a, a better temperature. Okay, so we've got the cooler there. We've got a cooler there. Let's un undo that. It's now also 17 degrees in here. And there we go. So Contreras Paramedic is no longer inspired. However, we have a new recruit. And it tells us where the new recruit is. So John is now... Uh, in our fold, we can see that he has joined the top. So John's at the top, and he's joined us. And we can see uh, what his bio is again. So let's take a look. So he can't do intellectual or crafting. That's fine. He's a careful shooter, so he's more accurate, but he takes more time to shoot. He's kind, which is always uh, a very good thing to have in a colony. And he's a fast learner. Global learning factor seventy-five percent. That is not to be underestimated. So he's gone from from zero to hero. He's gone from trying to attack us to actually being on our side. So the first thing he's going to do is get dressed. We need to assign him jobs to do. So let's do that. Now, what's he good at? He's good at... Uh, let's have a quick look again. So he's good at... He's good at constructing. He's good at mining. He's good at cooking. Or he will be good at cooking. So mining, constructing, cooking. Let's put him on a two. This would give Fringer a break because she's quite a busy, busy lady doing other things. But we'll put him as a two for a cook. And he'll take over when she's busy. So that's good. I'll put him on two of those. Okay. So he's going to go off. He's going to change his gear as necessary. And we've got a party. He's going to throw a party. Excellent. This is great. Now what a party does, it doesn't have any super effect on the game. But it puts everyone in a really good mood. They'll all go to the, a place of sociability. Um, and they'll just all chat to each other and have a lovely time. Not drink any booze because they don't have any. Um, not have any sausage rolls. 
which is a huge shame. Um, and uh, they will have a bit of a nice time. They will get a, a mood buff as a result. See, attended party. So it's only a small buff, but it's very nice anyway. Right, now, in the interest of saving energy, I'm going to turn that light off. We don't no, 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 no one need that. And honestly, the passive cooler. Uh, we, we can leave that on, frankly. It does need to be regularly replenished with wood, so... But we, we've got plenty of wood for now, so that's fine. So we have four colonists now, rather than three. So we're going to dig that out, and we're going to, as soon as that's done, we're going to build a wall and build a room for John, our new colonist. Okay, John's, John's sleeping in the bed there, which is great. So what we're going to do, because we have a bed already, we don't want to build another one, we're going to reinstall that right there. And we're going to build a nice floor, just to make sure we get, it doesn't get debuffed due to the floor type. So that'll be up in the morning. So for now, Contreras will... Oh, he's moved his own bed. Okay, that's fine. I was going to say, Contreras is going to sleep out here, but he doesn't need to do that anymore. So that's cool. Okay. So you see how effective the passive cooler is, really. I mean, it's 17 in all of these rooms, 17, 18, 19. And it's 41 in this room down here, which is not joined by the vent. So that's quite astonishing, really. So what we'll do is we'll put a vent in this one as well. So just from one passive cooler, it's uh, pushing the coolness around to all these three rooms, which is great. It's got an extra bedroom, and we're sorted with that. So how's the research coming along? So we're almost there with it. If you hover over it, we can, sorry, bottom left-hand corner, it's 334 out of 400. So doing quite well. So you'll see the little red Z appear. That means that he was disturbed in his sleep, um, but that's kind of can't be avoided. You get a small deep buff. Not much. It's like minus one per instance. So that... But that's fine. You'll see that John is cooking. Um, he's got a cooking set to two, so he's doing a little bit of cooking where uh, Fringe was sleeping. So that's it. so he's proving his worth already. Where's he off to? Oh, he's hauling the wood. So he's uh, he's worked through his work list. He hasn't got anything more to do, so now he's hauling, which is fine. Do we pick up that muffler over here? We did. Okay. So the thing you've got to bear in mind is that the more people you have, the more mouths you have to feed. So you've really got to keep an eye on your food. This is a good idea. Now you've got one extra pair of hands to basically put down a little bit more of your um, growing zones because winter is approaching. I mean, it is the summer, but time goes really quickly. So we're going to grow some strawberries and we're going to grow some heel root. Now heel root is the medicine that grows wild and turns into this. And then it turns into what is harvested into herbal medicine. Herbal medicine is actually pretty good, but you want to grow some because you will run out of it. Um, you sorry, you will run out of the medicine you started with. As you can see, we've only got five left. Um, sorry, five there. Then we have 25 there. So it seems like a lot, but it will go. So you need herbal medicine. So, so grow your herbal medicine is probably a smart move. So it looks like the colony is underway. An extra pair of hands really is such a force multiplier now because it frees up the colony from doing other things. It's quite astonishing. So when you've got four, you, you, you really do begin to fly. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a good thing. The heat wave is over. That's fantastic. So we're going to actually deconstruct this now. We'll deconstruct this in here. Because we don't want to chill it, the other rooms, any more than we need to. Because it's only 25 outside. And they'll start complaining that their rooms are cold. So we'll deconstruct those. We'll get a little bit of wood back. Um, and that's, that's great. You'll see that the tally ring bench is built. And we can see that we can make quite a lot of different things. Now, once you sort of get into mid and late game, or, or perhaps if your people, one of your people starts with a really good skill in creating, you can make some um, really good quality uh, apparel. Now, this can be sold for a decent amount of money um, because obviously it's worth a lot if it looks good. So yeah, you can make some of this to wear, purely to wear, or you can make make it to sell. It's entirely up to you. Bearing in mind that winter is coming, so making some parkas is probably a good idea. You can put them in storage. So the, how to do this, you click on make parka. To get into the details, you can see how much you need. So you need 80 ingredients. So how much have we got? We've got 104 blue fur and only 41 of the other ingredients. So blue fur, I believe is, yeah, so it says there, the furry pelt of muffalo. So what we need to do, we've got enough to make one parka, so let's do that. 
Okay, we've done that. One Parker. Um, we need to go and hold, hunt more Muffalo now in order to get meat and also to get fur as well. So if I just highlight those guys and click on hunt. So we basically we're starting to prepare for the winter. Otherwise your colonists will get very cold. Rare thrombos. So let's go and have a look at those. So what does it say? They're very uh, peaceful by nature. They're very dangerous when confronted. Some traders will pay a lot of money for their precious leather and horn. And they'll go after a few days. So I've not... I've not really bothered doing a lot with thrombos. They, they seem to be a lot of hassle to tame. Um, but also, no handler can tame it. You need level 9 in animals, and the best we've got is 3. So we can't tame it anyway. And to attack it, I've, I've never bothered. At this early stage, uh, also, it's probably a lot more hassle than it's worth. I can imagine them being quite tough to take down. So I tend to leave them alone. I've, I've actually had a situation once where a, um, a faction attacked me. And, and it hit the thrombo, and the thrombo uh, actually attacked them. So that, that, was, that was that was a while ago. So just dealing with the mufflos. So John's picked up the carcass. It's interesting because normally, um, as soon as you kill an animal, you tend to pick it straight up. But this uh, this has changed. It's interesting. We've actually got some uh, some steel there. We didn't pick up. That's nice. Four hundred thirty-six steel. Brilliant. That's right, but John's John's picking those up. So we'll get more, uh, more blue fur in due course, which is great. Okay. Well, I think that's pretty much it. I'm not going to drag this, this one out for too long because I didn't really want to go to four videos anyway, but I couldn't fit it all into three. So hopefully you've picked up um, how to kind of s start up a colony. You may not think this is the best layout, and you know, do you know what? It probably isn't. But you can change it all later. What I would recommend is get rid of the wood, the wooden walls and the wooden floors as much as possible. Or you might want to keep wood, some wooden walls, but make, make your outside walls um, stone. And maybe do every other wall inside as being stone as well. So fires can't spread too much because I can guarantee to you, your base will burn down when you least expect it. Which is a bit of a problem. So what I'll do is I'll keep it running just until we get to research batteries which is coming any minute now okay the batteries have been done researched build batteries for storing electricity so what we want to do is put her on something else so i think probably solar panels are the next thing good thing to work on now we have batteries because you can store up the the solar from the day use it at night okay batteries let's go to batteries quickly go to power you'll now see we have batteries which is brilliant it uses 70 steel and two components so this is where components starts coming really useful so we're going to build a battery uh, maybe build two put one there and we'll put one just say here for the sake of argument right now the batteries are ugly and um, they do uh, detract from the prettiness of the room as you can see minus 14 so what I would do is basically don't put them outside they will um, they are sensitive to water so if there's rain and stuff they go bzz and can cause a fire and explode etc so build a little room outside uh, but leave access all the way around the battery so you can actually put them out if they catch fire. Okay, don't block them into a two by two by one room. Okay, give them space around the outside. Now, you may need to connect the, the batteries up to the power grid. So let's just do that quickly. This one you won't need to because it's right next to the power grid already. So that doesn't matter. Uh, did I not do that? Mm -hmm. So we can see that that one's attached already. Brilliant. And what's going to happen now is if you click on the battery, you'll see that it's starting to store power, this figure down here. Now we're not pumping a lot of power in because it's being diverted off to the cooker, to the lights, you know, to everything else. So this, um, sorry, the battery, oops, the battery is counting up slowly and each battery is getting some power. So now if you build a solar panel uh, or a wind generator, so a wind turbine for instance, um, you can actually add to that. So that's probably the next thing I would do is build, let's say, this. Now, the white squares mean that the wind generator has to have nothing growing tall and a wall uh, is included in that, um, in, in this grid. Okay. So when this is built, it will not turn quickly because you've got to clear these trees and that one. And then it will start to spin quicker. So you then connect that up to the, the power and you are good to go. 
Now, there's one, two more things I want to show you before we go. So firstly is uh, animal resting spots, one thing I haven't covered. Now, animals can sleep anywhere. They don't care. They'll sleep inside, they'll sleep outside. They don't get upset about it like your colonists do. However, create an animal sleeping spot and put it anywhere you like. So let's say we put it in there. Now, the animals will now go and sleep here as a preference. As I said, it doesn't make any difference to their attitude. However, if they get injured, you can only treat them here. I don't think you can treat them uh, and patch them up you don't have a, an animal sleeping spot so bear that in mind i'll just put it in it doesn't cost anything so just put it in um and then finally for today i'm going to show you what you can expect in an ancient an ancient danger site so let's go ahead and do that i'll show you that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to save the game very quickly uh, in case i ever want to come back to this so bear me for a second and i'll be right back Okay, let's do this. So John is now going to deconstruct the wall and put it on normal speed. So this is what you ha what you get when you deconstruct a wall for an ancient danger site. <laughs> right. So in this case, and it does vary from danger site to danger site. You've got some glitter world medicine. This stuff is amazing. You've got a psychic soothe pulsar. You've got a barnic arm. And you've got stuff, so you've got loot in here, which is really worth getting. A psy psychic soothe pulsar basically makes makes everybody feel nice. Um, you can get shock lances, which will drive somebody into a state of uh, brain damage. Um, you, you know, you've got some drugs. You've got these crypto sleep caskets, which you can actually open them up. Inside these, sometimes, are people that need rescuing. Um, other times, they I think you can get bugs inside them as well. I don't, can't remember. Um, either way, this time you've actually got mechanoids. Okay, now mechanoids will plague you for the rest of the of the game. They'll land in ships. They'll land in drop pods, and you'll have to take them on. Um, these guys are melee fighters. You can tell they've got the knives. These guys are the long range fighters with their charge lances. Um, these that they are very accurate and they hit like a train. These centipedes have got one or one of two weapons. They've either got like a big sort of machine gun, which is inaccurate but fires an awful lot of bullets, or they have a a charge blaster, which this one has, has which basically fires um, like a uh, incendiary grenade. He's already aiming, so he's going to fire. So let's move John out of the way. Well, that makes any difference because they are kind of doomed. Actually, I'll tell you the other way around. The charge blaster is a machine gun, <laughs> and the other one has an inferno cannon. Sorry, which is the uh, the incendiary grenade. So, John uh, John actually took a hit, um, as you can see, took a hit to the torso. So that's pretty much it um, for episode four of the guide, and this is the final one. I'm not going to let this play out because it's depressing watching your colonists get mowed down. There's nothing they can really do against these guys. They're not advanced enough. They don't have armor. They don't have advanced weapons. They are going to get absolutely ruined by these guys. Uh, so I don't think anybody wants to see that. And if you want to see it, then you can build your own colony. So I hope this uh, guide was useful. As I said, I'm sorry it's run to four episodes rather than three. Um, but hopefully I've covered the main parts. We've seen some temperature uh, management. Uh, we've seen, you know, how to deal with prisoners. We've seen what an ancient danger has inside it. Showing you how to get sort of power up and running. Uh, freezers and sort of storerooms and other bits and pieces. So, um, yeah, I hope it's uh, this guide will help you start up your own colony and uh, have much success. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask uh, on the comments below. Uh, please do leave a like or a dislike, depending on whether you liked or disliked it. And if you disliked it, it's worth telling me what is what it was you didn't like about this, so I can try and improve for the future. So that's it from me. Thank you very much, and I'll catch you on the next one.